like a 45. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like it was straight up. Uh, yeah. Just because like there's like the direct sound is like really like it just it's overpowering, but like 45s do take long. So what I did last time at the last session was put their guitars in like a You got it? But crowd talker. Yeah, we got it. Is that loud enough? Hi, Jake. For now? Jake, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Jake. It feels like riding a roller coaster when you get into the top of that first giant hill and you look down and see about how, how far you're going to drop and your heart starts to beat 100 miles an hour. It's kind of like that. This was an idea that Aaron Jones and I talked about last semester and what we wanted to do was create a really challenging show that would force students to learn new things but in a way that was really fun uh, and something that we could that was challenging enough and aggressive enough that if we could pull it off we'd all be really proud of it and have a ton of fun doing it even though it would be hard work. So we uh, talked about this idea quite a while ago. And it was it would require such a large crew that we thought, well, we don't even know if we can pull this off. So we said, you know what? Forget it. We just got to try. We just have to try and see what happens. And students were so excited about the idea, we had no trouble getting a crew together. And we're like, all right, let's do it. So um, the three different organizations we have involved, um, first of all, there's uh, Moore Hall Television, MHTV. Um, and then we've got more media records, the recording label that um, Broadcast and Cinematic Arts has. We, we've got that as well, and they do the live mix of the show. And then the third group is WMHW, our on-campus radio station. Um, and so what's cool about it is, is we're bringing three different kind of types of students that normally don't interface with each other too much. You know, to integrate live TV into a radio show um, was, was really not something we'd ever done. So um, it's really cool, I have radio uh, DJs doing camera operation and stuff that has just has never been attempted before. Tonight we're going to be rocking out with Car Crash Rhetoric and Eric Lomenko. Once we hear a couple of jams from each artist, we're going to get a chance to talk to them about their music and a little behind the scenes of night. what makes their <laughs> bands tick. Okay, the graphic. We also want to make sure we're band. asking the question band. all of you want to hear, so tweet us any questions or comments you have at great. Summit underscore session. Or if you're watching on Facebook, leave us your thoughts down there in the comment section right Stay below. Dissolve. We will select a couple questions to ask each guest. Dissolve. Live production is something that I actually thrive for. I love live production. I love the adrenaline rush that it gives you because everything that you do is critical. Yeah, everything that you're doing up until the time that you break to the live program is all preparing. It's, it's all getting your graphics ready, getting your camera shots ready, getting your changes ready, making sure that you and the uh, director, the producer, and the people who are going to be on camera are all on the same page. Uh, and as you move forward with the whole live production, I mean, when things fall, fall apart, that's when things get the most exciting because now you have four or five different people trying to correct that mistake and make it look like nothing happened. So being on a live production, especially something that's live music, is really exhilarating for me because I mean you never know what's going to happen out here. Ready one, and one, ready three, go three, get the jump. Yeah! Ready one, three, and take one, tilt up, one, and you go in, give me my jump, back up. Tilt up, one. Hold that, ready, three, pull out. Dissolve the three. Great job. 
Thank you very much. We're a car crash rhetoric. It's a phenomenal opportunity for students to work as a team and get the opportunity to like do it and kind of do it for real. You know, there's, there's an extra level of pressure because they're trying to meet my expectations, which I struggle to meet my own expectations. But I think that it, specifically in this career field, you have to struggle. struggle. If, if you're not challenging yourself, somebody, you know, is going to get the job you want. And so that's, that's kind of my take on it. I am a radio person. I do a, like way more audio. I've really never done anything video. Um, so just like learning how to use a camera was pretty fun. It definitely was stressful at times. There were a lot of times when we didn't think it was going to work and we didn't, like all the planning that we had done was probably for nothing. But, uh, you know, it happened at the end of the day, so we got it all figured out. This is the best experience they can hope to get at college. Hands-on experience in a live studio show. They're going to know how to pull off live music production, live studio production. Uh, they're going to gain a lot of real-world experience, and they're going to have a lot of fun doing it. Two, stand by to fade out the name key. Fade out the name key. We started five seconds ago, just so you know where we're at time-wise. <laughs> seven o'clock is seven o'clock. OK, which, where is it? But we're OK. But we're this close, so that's pretty damn good for rehearsal. So it's an exciting atmosphere, which makes it more interesting to the students. But then they're also getting to see the people who stand at the front of their classrooms and preach to them every day. Like, they're getting to see that, no, we really do this stuff. And so the students really appreciate it more. And there's just a new electricity on the first floor uh, surrounding this show. Well, there's a lot of energy. There's one shot. It's live, it's done, it's on the way, so everybody has to be at the top of their game, really paying attention, and to be able to overcome inevitable little technical glitches that may appear. We'll be waiting good or no. for you. Good or no. What's this good we do? They're coming after you. We're gonna solve so that mystery. You see a Scooby Doo, the trail is back to you. What's this good we do? I haven't seen it. They're not talking to me. Okay, let's do a full band test now. Figuring stuff out. I know. Hey. Everything with the shit. Don't you pizza. love it? Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. <laughs> Gets the adrenaline going. I mean, honestly, if we need to, we could literally just someone have someone sit on the voice slider and like just watch it really carefully. Yeah, that's a lot of to get to that song, and we went purple. So. Well, I don't think he was going full volume. Like I know he screamed at one part. No, it's me. So yeah, they got it. So tell me what you think about me. I won't try to argue. Thank you. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well, we're ready. Why did it all go down right after we ate, man? Yeah, like, we shouldn't have stopped to eat. Seriously. Just, just if, we just, if we had just sat here, it all would have been fine. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, it was all the dairy. <laughs> um... When we're live on the air, everybody's nerves are on end for the whole show, and it's an incredible adrenaline rush. Oh God, there's so many stressful parts. When uh, Car Crash Rhetoric was playing, they uh, there was mics going bad, and uh, we had to go in there and we had to figure out where it was coming from, how to fix it. At one point, we actually lost um, we lost the feed from one of our vocal mics, and that was really hectic because we were getting real close to showtime, so we had to try to fix that real fast. Well, they're not sending me any levels. I need television levels. Who's not sending levels? 
We also want to make sure we're asking the questions. All of you want okay, to Okay, they're not sending me him. They're not sending me Wes at all. See, this is him coming in to audition. This well, is him this coming is, in from there. This is, yeah, so program yeah. VU is low. I got yeah, you. in other words, I'm sending them um, levels. They're not sending them back here. They're not sending us mic levels back. That's what I'm hearing. And on guitar and lead vocals, we've got Kyle Angle. These guys have been pushing the label as a local. Does MMR understand that I am not hearing Wes's mic? I'm getting there. The mic is very low coming services. from MMR. Here they are making their television debut. It's Happy by Car Crash Rhetoric. So glad. <laughs> I'm sending him good levels. Well, you know, uh, uh, let's. Okay. No, we don't. We don't have video. Uh, here's here's a picture. Um, so should we have Wes talking? Yeah. Okay, kill the man. Kill the man. Okay, Wes. Check Wes again, please. Coming into this type of situation where now I have an entire crew of live audio people who I'm not used to working with. I've got radio people who aren't used to constantly listening to a headset and like when I say mic check, I need it now because we're going on the air in 14 seconds or whatever. And so there's a level of immediacy in, in my internal clock that they don't necessarily share. And so the, the biggest struggle for me is I need to keep myself calm, at least present myself as being calm, even if I'm not. Showing of this show, we're yeah, we know. We know, but what you're sending me is minus 40. All right. What? So, right now we are joined Here, by watch, watch this. This is what I'm sending. Mm -hmm. This is what's coming in from S6. Which would be what's going out to live stream. Yeah, this is what's going out to the world. This is, so my levels on him are fine. My levels on the band are good, but my level from him on S6 is coming out like this. Okay. They're not getting enough level from us. Basically, uh, we yell an expletive, and then we run over into the room and grab a mic and throw it somewhere else until we can get something to work. We're using the studios in ways that they're not used to being used. Our, our TV studio, for instance, is mostly used for news. And when you start pushing its limits like we're doing with this show, things will break or not work. And so there were a lot of things that just didn't work. We're like, okay, how are we going to fix this? Plug in a microphone, no sound. Or we plug in a microphone and it's got a nasty hum or a buzz in it. And we got to figure out what's wrong and get it fixed. Um, we've had microphones go bad, cables go bad. Um, we had Wes on the wrong microphone last week. It didn't sound good. It was okay. We swapped it out this week way better. Uh, it, it, we're, we're pushing the facilities we have to the limit to the point where we're finding out where the weaknesses are, and then we're fixing them. We're figuring out, and students are figuring out how to work around things. They're learning tons of problem solving, which is one of the most valuable skills you can have on the job. Yeah, we are. And what makes their fans tick? I mean, they're we sending also want to make sure them, right? we're asking the Yeah, but they're getting their audio feed, feed from our snake, so it's coming through us and then back to them. Sessions. Or if you're watching on our Facebook live stream, so we just you can leave your thoughts and comments right there yeah. in the comment like section below. We will ask so several questions for you guys and talk about them to each guest. Our performers tonight are from right here in the Mount Pleasant area. Let's meet the band now. On drums, we have Jacob Seavey. Slap in the bass, we've got Jeremy Waddy. And on guitar and rocking out lead vocals, we've got Kyle Angle. These guys have been pushing the label as a local pop punk happy? band. Yeah, no, they are happy. They said that was perfect. Okay. okay. Cool. They said thank you, Jim. Woo! Okay. But it ended up being a bad chord, so we had to talk to people in the studio to go in and fix it, and uh, that's what happened. I mean, in the situation itself, it's pretty stressful, but afterwards, you know, it feels good that we fixed the problem really fast and we got it done in time. Part, oh. 
So what I'm, assu- runs what I'm assuming is all the audio comes through us, and it must be just all sent back to their studio. Yeah, yeah. they're sure. sending everything is coming to us, and we're yeah. sending it back. But I mean, I mean that makes sense though, because like if we have all the like all the drums and stuff hooked up, like well, yeah, but I mean with they their, want it all with their audio, like they're sending all of like the intro music and everything. the and like the commercials and his mic, they're sending that all in a package. That's just this one fader. Which sucks. So now that we turn that up, fuck, everything, everything's gonna be up. It's gonna be super loud. Well, ho- mm. should yeah. I get Jim back in here or should, what should I do? I mean, can you just mention that over there that since we turned up his, aren't the PSA is gonna be super loud? Now? Since we turned up Wes's mic here, aren't the PSA is gonna be super loud coming from us because it's just one feed? He said, I don't know, and he started counting down. So, <laughs> okay. If it's loud, fuck it. We had so that. many errors of just like things going wrong and we're like, oh, well, this person isn't gonna get sound unless we do like this thing. Oh, but when we do that thing, there's gonna be these new problems. So basically, it was just like a uh, problem solution, problem solution until we like got, we weeded everything, everything out. For when we switch out the- Walk and talk. Okay. Most stressful part, um, during the actual production, oh, was when we had to, basically we were changing acts uh, between uh, Car Crash Rhetoric and Eric. And so basically what I had to do is go in there and change certain mics that Eric would be using that were currently being used in Car Crash Rhetoric. Okay, so when we switch out like the, the 414, yeah. we're gonna turn off the Phantom Power for both of them. So I was gonna uh, take take the 414 and say, uh, no, for when Eric comes on during that break. Yeah. So we have we have the music in the mitten and like the commercial break to set everything up. So okay. if I get the 414 set up, why are we turning it on? Because like, uh, the phantom power. I mean the phantom not power. To... We're not even taking the mic out of the input. I would literally yeah. come in in here to tell you just keep it in the same input. Let's just switch it and put it on the same. No, it's not. I it's think... the stand's too tall for it. I input. think it works much better. If we're we taking just... it off the stand and putting it on a shorter stand, but leaving yeah. it in the same input. I'm saying take it, just unplug it. Does it still have an input for the other one? Yeah, not that's fine. It's still plugged in. So why don't we just unscrew it and put it on the stand and we're good to go. All you gotta do is switch the input. Because then you have to unwrap the entirety of the cable. Yeah. I'm saying just unplug it, unscrew it, put it on that other one. And then the DI box. So it'd be much yeah. easier to get a shorter stand right here than that stand. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Cool. And then, yeah, so I was going to take care of the 414 if you set up the DI. Okay. okay. First the set up the DI. Just plug it. It's a, there's two inputs. It says amp and instrument. Yeah. Unplug the amp one. You don't need that at all. And then wherever the instrument one leads to, unplug that, put it in his guitar. Instrument one to his guitar. Yep. So amp just one to the amp. amp. Fuck that one, take it out, and then instrument, make sure whatever, wherever that is on the other end, it'll, what's be, the other his, end plug it'll be in his bass. So if it's from insert to, or instrument to his guitar, what's the other end is already plugged in? Yeah, no, I mean like, I'll show you. There's a DI box right over here. Or I can just switch the 414. Yeah, we could do that too, if you want. So literally just, there's going to be something plugged in here. Okay. Something plugged in here. Oh, because yeah, it, you're taking it from the bass amp to leave the... leave this in, whatever, wherever the other end of this uh, quarter inch is, goes into his guitar. Go yeah. Bills. It should be in his It's bass. simple enough. And then like after... The one that's, the one that's in the bass, just switch it from amp to in, 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 the instrument one. There's going to be one plugged in, it's going to be both ends of like one chord, right? Oh, you only okay. need to unplug the amp one and take you the amp the part. And just do the DI Okay, box. I'll do the I'll DI do the, okay. I'll do the <laughs> let, me, let me grab this quarter inch. It's literally two ends of a chord plugged it's in just there. One, uh, one it's just chord. one chord yeah. and you unplug the amp side and plug that into his guitar. I, I think you're also confused. Me? Boots in room 182, come back and see. I'm too stressed right now, bro. That's what he just told me. I was just relaying the news. What room? Uh, Where's 185? One and a half. Yeah. Thank you. A different one in this room. Yeah. What you do? I lose my gum. Fuck this one. Excuse me, sorry. Then the other end of this one. 
goes in his guitar. Yeah. I don't know if you said it weird that I wasn't understanding it. Oh, okay. Then that was my bad. Well, I'm going to try to not understand it. Let's let's figure that out another time. You do the DI box. Yeah. And then we're going to switch. Yeah, just the other end of this chord. It's on omnidirectional, the circle. So switch it over to like. Doesn't need to be hyper cardioid, but cardioid. Um, yeah, cool. That'll, it'll all Those will like all stay the same. Yeah. I got it. On ground, How does the on pickup. Audio sound? Does it sound good? Well, audio in here sounds fucking great. Yeah. Uh, even when you practice and practice and practice live TV, it's just so tough, you know. But I think it went really well. It sounded really great on TV and radio, even though we ran into some problems in here. Everyone on the outside said, hey, sounds good. So we already have a 414 uh, something in there that we can literally just wrap and suck in. Why don't we do that? Why don't we set up a 414 now? Live TV is hard. Yeah. That was uh, full of problems. But they're all fixable. Well, so since today. we're switching out to the 414 after the break, why don't we set it up on the stand now? And then just have like, the XLR to like, wrap on there. Yeah. Do we have a 414 down there? I just ran it down there right now because I'm trying to set it up and we have to do it. So, you want me to run down? Well, I can't get in there right now. Yeah, you can. You do. If you want to get in there, you have to walk in there. Yeah, you gotta go around, but that outermost most door is cracked on. Got it. Do we have a stand down there? Um, just switch it with the base stand. I was just gonna unplug the base. Okay. It, yeah, it's quite stressful because you have a you have a tight window to do something So they're like you need to do this this and this and you need to solve them on your own Basically because you're the only one running there You don't have anyone else who knows like the message that you have to relay So it's you need to have great communication skills that tell someone very quickly. This is what we need to do This is what we this is the time we have to do it in and if we <clears throat> We mess it up <laughs> if We mess it up then I uh, uh, then it's gonna be a real issue and people are gonna hear it over the air. I really must confess, I don't sleep much anymore. The dreams they dance around me in and out the bedroom door. The moments are waiting just beyond the shade. And when they expect you to just accept the change. It's live TV, so you have like a minute and a half to do it. So it's like if you don't do it, you're screwed. It was my first time doing something like this, so feeling that adrenaline was like interesting. Something I'd never really felt before, but it was cool and I liked it and hopefully get to do a lot more of it. And for the first episode, boy, we didn't get the sound checks that we needed by the time we needed them. We were solving problems. Mike, it felt like minutes before the show. The mics aren't working and and it's this big panic because now I'm depending on this whole crew of people. And so it's very stressful, but there's just, just there's never a dull minute. And that first show was, it was an experiment. One of the things I love about this opportunity, not just for myself, but for all of these students is those declarative statements, I've never done this before. It's not true anymore. And, and like that, as an educator, as, as somebody in the teaching position wanting to see people love this stuff and care about it, when, when, when they go through that struggle and they get to the other side and they're like, you know what, that happens next time, we know what to do, that's, that's when it just, ooh. yeah, that's the best part of it.